Hey, this is John Bollinger with Premier Guitar. We're at the Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm with Phil Cohen of Def Leppard. Phil, hey, hey. great to see you again. You too. It's been like seven, eight years. Jeez. Uh, everybody else grows older, you don't. Oh, you actually you, look you. the same. <laughs> <laughs> the same forever. Oh, so, thank you. Thank thanks you. for joining us, man. Tell us about this guitar. Right, so, oh, we've got a song on the new album. Okay, well, so it started off, I wrote this song, but no. But, um, uh, this one, it, it, Jackson were doing a 30th anniversary, and um, Mike Hodgson at Jackson said, is this something you could do special for a, for a 30th anniversary guitar? Like, you know, make it your own, you know, you're gonna do yeah. something. I, I thought, doing a Jackson Pollock style paint splash, and, and I don't know Great why. Great idea. Right, yeah, th done that on 30 of them, and that says Phil in Japanese, so I, I had to learn, they're all numbered <laughs> as well, it, oh, in Japanese as well, so, you know, this was an artist proof one, so that that, that was me. But, um, yeah, we done 30 of them, we made them slightly different, they usually come with three pickups, you yeah. know, that, that's a sustainer, and that's a DiMarzio Super 3, so, uh, obviously a Floyd, and, and I have all the titanium FU tone stuff put on there, same as the block. Um, this was one of, well there was 30 that went out and then there was a few artist proof ones. So this was one of my personal ones. I've got two of these and um, kind of nice, it just sounds great. It's just, it's just got a really, it's been around the world, done a lot of stuff and, um, and I've met some of the other ones that I painted, which is kind of weird. Yeah. So you you literally painted yeah, if, 30 of them. Or, or, had you painted a lot before no, this? No, no, it was just a, a just a splashy thing. Good. You know, it's just there. Yeah, but I mean, it Good does kind of look like Jackson Pollock. Yeah, like, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the, the earlier ones, so this was one of the late ones, because I got a little more ambitious. This is kind of all over the place yeah. and a bit more. Some of the earlier ones had less paint on. I was being a bit more conservative yeah. with my splashing technique. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like I said, you know, there's a few, I've, I've seen one in Australia, some of the brought to the show, of Japan, and yeah, so yeah, love these. Yeah, that's great. I, yeah, and I love the way it turned out. I'm so impressed you <laughs> actually painted it. And yeah, I'd go in like, um, you know, six, seven o'clock in the morning. Jackson Guitars, Fender Factory is not far from me in California. Yeah. So I'm, I'm there quite a bit, you know. Um, so, you know, testing things out and, you know, customizing. Sure. Actually, this, well, I've got another one, the yeah, Fender Acoustasonic. Yeah. Um, I got one of the prototypes because they said, oh, could you test this new thing out? So I, I had one of the very first ones, which um, it's got this backstage out to me. Yeah, that's great. And so you're playing that and you're actually using the acoustic and going to the rock and roll in, setting. Into, yeah, oh. which is a bit, was a bit scary at first because it's, you know, on the album, it's a, it's a Telecaster. I used a, a Squire yeah. Telecaster. Um, and I thought, well, you, it sounds going to be a real compromise. It actually wasn't. I mean, huh. you'll hear later on. It's yeah, okay. pretty crazy. But, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, that is very cool. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Well, let's see, uh, let's see another one. All right, so it's aging quite well as well. It's kind of doing its thing. Hard know? mileage on that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you want Bella, yeah? Yeah, yeah, if you don't mind, because I remember um, this one back in Hysteria, right? I yes, mean, this yeah, yeah, it's in um, Animal Video, yeah. um, Armageddon It Video. I've used it on a few things recording-wise. It feels so beautiful now, it's all worn in and, yeah. you know, it's got a really skinny neck. This is, um, I think, 86. It was one of the first ones that Jackson actually uh, made for me. Grover Jackson said, um, you know, we can do glow-in-the-dark you know, paint things, and I said, he said, get a, get an image, and we'll kind of get a version of it. So um, I got an image of Bela Lugosi. I thought it, it Dracula glowing the Fantastic. dark, all of that stuff. Um, and it's actually got Dimaggio Super Threes under there as well. <laughs> we um, we did that, and, and over the years, it's, it's obviously now it's got the titanium saddles and a titanium block. Um, it, it's it's wonderful. It, it really is. It kind of um, it just feels like a. You know, old guitar. Like I said, it's it's one of the first Jacksons that that they ever made for me. So, uh, did you find that the paint on those Demarzios does that change the tone at all? Because it should, shouldn't it? Yeah, but, um, and and you leave most years open. Right? Yes. Yeah. And, and I, you know, kind of high up. And I've actually, for most part, gone gone onto X two ends. Yeah. To get even more gain. You sure. Know, and more power. But uh, this one, for some reason, it's got a coil tap, which I actually use. I use this for love bites when we play it live. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, it, it really kind of cleans up lovely and uh, it, it got a, 
the frets wore out. So Mike Chandler and Jackson have done a lovely job. And I, every time I play it, it's like mouth watering. You know, right. so it's, uh, yeah, because it's just been around the block a few and times. And you're using those big stainless steel frets. Yes, yeah. Is it yeah. the 6,000? Is that, is that what it is? Oh, I don't know, but somebody in the comment section will know. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. They will know. Don't quote me, because I may have got it yeah. wrong, but he put them on, on I, I love the fact, yeah, I love the frets on this one more, yeah. more than most of them, actually, yeah. Beautiful, that is such a, a iconic guitar. Um, I lent it to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum. They had it for, Years actually, and um, we played Cleveland one night. It's like, could I borrow my guitar? They took it out of the case, and uh, we played it and they gave it back to them, and they put oh, it great. there. But it's, it's it's been out in the last few tours now. So. Did you give them a uh, a uh, placeholder guitar when you took it? Yeah, away? they've got another one. They, okay. they had another one, and uh, there's another story about that. I'll save that for another day. Cause it's quite funny. But, okay, uh, yeah. great. We'll save that for the for the next rig rundown. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Eight years from now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty thirty. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Hey, I want to ask you about this one. I I know this was such a baffling guitar to me. Just <laughs> that neck yeah. looks like it was built on a dare. Like like I like I like I dare you to make the fattest, most unplayable neck well, possible. It was. Yeah. It, oh really? Uh, so so I'm always. Every year, I, I, I go, do you think you could make the neck just a little bit fatter, you know, God. just every tour? And Why? I, I just love the way it sustains and it, it doesn't move. And I, I'm really quite aggressive and it never goes out of tune. So I, I just like the, the chunkiness of it. And you know, the heavy strings, they're like 13 to 54, I'm, I think, these guys. God. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just, just love how it feels. Anyway, they, they Jackson, I, I have another one, my favorite guitar of all my guitars is there's a red one of this it's got it's maple top but it's stained red huh. and um they done it they said oh, well check this out then and <laughs> so they made it and they, they actually did that they said they done it for a joke <laughs> and i was like man this sounds great this perfect is, this is absolutely <laughs> so when we come to do this joe williams jackson um done this actually during covid huh. so you know i had to get i couldn't be back and forth there because it's you know the, it was a whole different scenario there but um yeah this one it, it's got the same neck as the as the red one um dimarzio x2n that's a sugar chakra that's that's my own um, oh Dimazio. this one looks a little bit different though yeah. okay is that like a prototype for is that how the the final model it's yeah that's it that's the final one okay. it's um Got a lot of output it's for for a single coil rail one. It's the, it's the most output that, that they do. And when I was on G3 tour, we were testing them. We yeah. were trying different ones out, and we settled on that. So yeah. That's Did it. Larry actually make that for you? Yeah. Was it, yeah. 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 So, yeah. And was he just tweaking to your all the time? Yeah. yeah just back and forth. I'm going. That guy's amazing. Right? Is, I love him. Yeah. Know? And I've been using Dimarzo since I was 17. So yeah. That was you yeah. Know, just just love him. You know, yeah. I'm on everything. How cool! And you've got your signature, uh, signature to Mars. Yeah, sure it's great. got the sustainer on it, and, and that's obviously a sustainer. That's another one of them. So it's uh, you know you can jam it in between, or you can put it there, and these two come on together. Oh. So it's like a super humbucker type that's thing. Great. Yeah. And what is this model actually called? It's called a Supreme. Supreme. A PC Supreme, but um, you can only get it on order. They don't do it as a as a regular yeah. run. They, and it comes with a regular neck, with a with a, a, a um, neck for mere mortals. I've seen a couple that are like that. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, when you order them, when you, when you have a mate, there's... I've actually, yeah, played a couple. But yeah. for most of them, there's... Most of them are the ones that I have, so... Uh, <laughs> and the original one had a... Had a yeah. That one, actually. That's the that's the prototype. This this yeah. blue one? And that's been going through some... Uh, See, this this neck feels great. It, it, yeah. It's wonderful. You big, know? but not crazy yeah, big. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, again, bless you. <laughs> um, this this is the new FU Tone they color. That, that's titanium. Love Isn't that, that. cool? Yeah, yeah so cool. Um, and I used this in the uh, kick video. So, uh, yeah. but it, yeah, it was, it was the first one. And it was, um, you know, what did all these different kind of parts of another guitar but not not like that you know like a yeah an it's SG, its own a thing prs and a les paul a les paul special and it's it's just a bit of everything so um oh i love it i love that they they sound like i said that one's crazy so we're trying to 
upgrade it all the time. It's got the titanium there, it's got the titanium there. It sounds a little different, you know, and, and I, I guess the neck, that neck makes it, you know. Yeah. Like, so what one should I play tonight? Because I've been back and forth. God, what well, one's on here? I can only speak for myself. I could not play that guitar. Oh, okay. I could. I I'll mean, play that one yeah, I tell, yeah, I think you should, All right. just because you can. Okay. Yeah. Well, Phil, hey, thanks so much for meeting with us. Absolute again. pleasure. Yeah, Thank congrats. you. Congrats. Yeah, thanks. I love your work. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, I'm with John Zocco, who is Phil Collins Tech. John, thanks for joining us, man. Absolutely. No problem. Hey, so tell me about this guitar. We were kind of marveling at it before this started, but tell the good people back home. About this thing. Well, this is a PC1, his signature model, Jackson. Uh, this particular one, they put an extremely, I don't know if you can see that, extremely fat neck on it. And they actually had to mod the neck pocket to fit it on there. He, he really loves baseball bat necks. And, and I tell you, I, I wish all of you could actually hold this thing because it is, it is so fat, it feels like it was built on a dare. I mean, like, I don't know how he does it. I, I, I almost want to say, I remember hearing that at one point, it was like, how big can you make one? And they did as a joke, I think. And then he was like, "Yeah, it's great." So, God. yeah, I, I mean, I got big hands, and I could not, I could not play like it's guitar. massive. Yeah, it's surprisingly comfortable after a while because it really does kind of fill your hand. But this one is a little extreme for me. Yeah, the, the other ones are fat, but this one is over the top too. I, I, so cool. the, the signature model that you buy has a more just a normal, yeah, yeah normal, normal human being neck. Normal yeah, human being neck. Um, but all the other accoutrements. All yep. the same. Sustainer. Um, this has uh, got a Demarzio X2N, which I've been swapping out too. Normally they come with a Super 3 or a Super Distortion, something like that. Yeah. Who's been getting into the super high output ones lately? So sure. I've been swapping them out to X2Ns now. Um, but for the most part, when you buy one off the rack, it'll have a basic Demarzio in it, Super 3, Sustainer. Yeah. This middle pickup here, he's got a signature Demarzio called the Sugar Chakra that we developed some prototypes for on the G3 tour, and he settled on one that he really likes, and it sounds great. It's yeah, a really I, cool pickup. Phil and Larry DiMarzio have been, they've been friends forever. Yeah, way, way back. He, he first started using DiMarzio's, I want to say pre-Leopard, you know, maybe back when he was playing in Girl, which wow. was way, way back. So, way back. Um, but they finally did come up with a signature model that we worked out some prototypes on, on the G3 tour a few years ago. Um, you know, he would listen to one, say, yeah, it leads a little more low end, and they'd send another one out. And event eventually, after about three or four, they settled on this one. Uh, it's in the middle on this one, but it sounds great in a bridge. I've got one in a bridge on a Strat at home. It sounds killer. Oh. Um, it's a really, really cool pickup. It's, it's loud, but it's got some clarity to it. It's, it's super nice. Very cool. And that's the one that's going, that pickup is, gonna, is in the signature model that goes out on the stores. I believe it may be in the middle on that one. I'm not sure what the latest version is, yeah. but typically the bridge will be a, a Super 3 or a Super Distortion. This has got an X2N. He's been getting into the high output thing lately, so uh, I'm swapping them all out. Uh, but yeah, so typically when you buy one, it's, it's set up just for, you know, a little more of a normal hand size. Sure, <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, you know, normal pickup. the pickup. same big frets. Yeah, uh, stainless steel, good size frets, sustainer, Floyd, all the, all the good stuff. Yeah. And what strings are you running? We're using Diderios. I did say it right. Nobody, yeah. ever, nobody says it right. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it's it's not a specific set. We uh, we order them in singles, and he's kind of assembled a set that he likes, and it goes from the 13 on the high E, oh. which is pretty heavy, God. Uh, to a 54 on the bottom. God. We, we tuned down a half step, but it's still still. Yeah, that's like they dig in. God, um, Phil is like superhuman. <laughs> he does. Yeah, he works out a lot, and it he, shows in his string choice. Yeah, 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 and he doesn't he doesn't age. I no, mean, no, he doesn't. He, he eats well. He's a strict vegan. He works out every day. He basically, shames all of us. So. <laughs> uh, well, it's working. Well, great. Well, let's look at a, let's look at the next one. Uh, there's another signature PC one. This is more along the lines of a normal sure. neck size. Um, again, yeah. it's got an X2N, his signature Sugar Chakra, Sustainer. They all pretty much have the same layout. Um, those pickups, that Sustainer is a big part of his sound. Yeah. Uh, this is a reverse headstock one also. Yeah, very cool. Which is fun. Can you um, feel how heavy this thing is? That still, one's not too bad. Still heavy, but yeah. not like those other ones. If you want heavy, And the neck is totally... Like that's doable. That's mere like mortals can play that guitar. Yeah. yeah. This one here is made of lace wood. 
which I had never really heard of. Uh, it's an older one, I believe. I worked on this at his house a few months ago. This one has got some heft to it. Let's feel that one there. Oh, God, they're all a little, yeah. little chunky for... And that's that's the name of this one, actually, is Chunky. chunky. So <laughs> all the guitars have names, so we put a little <laughs> P-Touch label. This one is Chunky. Same deal, X2N, sustainer. This is pre, I think, pre-Fender. Uh, so it had a little different headstock before a Fender took them under their now, umbrella. No, he's playing all Jacksons, is that right? Yes, all Jacksons. But uh, you, you and I were talking beforehand, he was like a, a wasn't the stereo mostly on a Strat, you were saying? Yeah, or? the stereo record was mostly cut on a Fender Strat that his mom got him, I believe, for his 21st birthday, named Felix, Felix the Strat. Um, <laughs> and yeah, most of the guitars you hear on there are that guitar. A lot of it's through a Rockman too, which Cut. is pretty pretty funny. Is that, which okay, that's gonna be a good that'll be a good segue point when we talk about the amp thing. But let's hold that off for now <laughs> and cover a couple more guitars. We've also got for the acoustic portion of the show, we're using the Fender Acoustic Sonics, which have been working out great. Well, this is like a you, cool relic one they made for them. Yeah, drug that behind the truck yeah, for a little it's while. It's really cool. I love it. We've got titanium bridge pins also from futone.com. Um, so they do a couple acoustic songs out on the on the thrust during the show. The cool thing about these is that you can get all your acoustic sounds, but when you throw it back to there, there's an actual regular bridge pickup. So if you listen tonight, he does a goes from a sensitive acoustic portion of the show to like a Hendrixy blazing lead and back to the acoustic. Oh, I do the switching great. over there, but it's a really flexible guitar for that sort of thing. You can you get nice acoustic sounds, but then you go back to that bridge pickup and it's just a regular electric guitar too. So very, oh. very cool. And Joe plays one as well, so. Yeah, very cool. Okay. And then let's see, oh, this is another cool one. Jackson made him something called the x Destroyer. <laughs> oh, that. Kind of modeled after his old Ibanez Destroyer. Sure. From the Pyromania days. That, that guitar is in the Hall of Fame right now. But oh. this one's really, really cool. Same thing, big chunky neck. X2N, sustainer. Electronic-wise, they're all pretty much the same. Um, but they all each have their own personality, too. So this plays on the last two songs of the set. Is that a kill switch? Or that is a kill switch, yeah. It, when it's plugged in, it lights up and kills it, which oh. is really cool. Yeah, that is very cool. So yeah, that's called the x Destroyer. You see that a little bit tonight. Love that. Okay, well. And then everything else is pretty much variations on the theme. Yeah. Well, let's, okay, then let's talk about um, uh, about the, the amp rig. All right. You're, you're going with, uh, with the uh, XFX3, is yep. it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we switched to those at the beginning of 2018. He was using the Axe 2 with a Marshall JMP preamp. Yeah. And we were on the G3 tour and he heard John Petrucci's, I think it was a pre production model. He had an Axe 3 out walking by the dress room one day and he's like, What's that? That sounds amazing. And we walk in and John's playing through that. So Phil grabbed a guitar. I pulled up a set list, a Leopard set list, and he starts playing Leopard songs and loved it. He said, I could do a, rig, a gig with this rig right now. God. So I got on the on the phone with Fractal, we got a couple sent out, started programming, and, and wound up with that. And it's super simple. That's the entirety of what you hear is that unit. Are you making the changes yes. on the? Okay, so you're making the changes on the board here. Yeah. So as does he's he have playing, a mastermind out there as well? No, he doesn't want to worry about sure. switching. Um, so I do everything here. He's got basically a preset per song, and within, if you know how the XFX works, each preset you can have up to eight scenes. So there's scenes where like a verse, chorus, solo, other parts, and as he goes along in the song, I just hit the changes and then oh. scroll to the next song, all the changes in the next scene. It's super easy. Man, We're, you've got to be on your gig, John. You cannot take a break. Yeah, between that and tuning, and if anything happens to break, which thankfully it hasn't, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's pretty busy. I got my hands full. The show goes by really quickly for me, so. Wow. But uh, everything's yeah. controlled by that RJM mastermind, uh, even the wireless channels. I pick, you know, from up there, they're programmed on there. So, you know, depending on what guitar we're using, I just switch on there. Wow. Super simple. It's it's bulletproof. There's one main, one spare. And we've got three rigs, an A, B, and a C that are the same. And they sound identical no matter where we are in the world. It's great. I yeah. just dump the programs into each one. And there's no no issues. It's, and the acoustic great. runs through it as yes, well. Yes, acoustic. I have a preset for the acoustic. It's basically just a DI. It goes in and out. And then when he takes a solo on the acoustic, here's another preset that pulls up the Hendrixy stuff. Mm -hmm. So 
it's it's a perfect rig for for what we do. Oh it's, god, it's amazing. And bulletproof. I mean, it's such a clean signal flow. There's nothing to go wrong. It is. Yeah. It's we run digital out as well, so everything's super clean. There's no no variables from night to night at all. Really, it's. And you're just you just have a longer rig, so you're hearing what he hears. Or, yep. Uh, yep. I have the same in ears that he does. So as we're going along, I hear exactly what he's hearing. If something goes wonky, I know what's going on. Hopefully. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. We've we've got it down pretty pretty good right now. It's, yeah, it's pretty smooth. Yeah, it's well. It's funny because you're out here with a lot of bands. There's a t there is a <laughs> guitar center's worth of gear is, yes. just on the deck right now, and this is about as lean and mean as you can do it. It really is. We've done a lot of tours with a lot of bands, and we've always got the the easiest rig, the smallest rig. Oh, we've seen some refrigerator racks of stuff, and uh, it's just. This just works. Yeah, it's consistent. It sounds great. It's clean. Yeah, we all love it. Front of house guy loves it. So everybody's happy. Yeah, that's great. Well, John, thanks so much, man. Sure, what man. a pleasure. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Good to have you. Cheers. Hey, everybody. I'm John Bollinger with Premier Guitar. I'm with Vivian Campbell of Def Leppard. We saw you about seven years ago. Great to see you back in Nashville. Thanks for talking to well, us. Thank you. I'm no better a guitar player than I was seven years ago. So. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't learned anything new. Yeah. Dude, I've been watching you since Dio. So, uh, you know, so great guitar player and a lifelong Les Paul man. Well, yeah, you know, I, I started on a Les Paul and then in the 80s I had to have a whiny bar and a pointy headstock <laughs> like everyone else. The reverse headstock, you know, you get all of that and then when I joined Leopard, I was playing Tom Anderson Strats yeah. in the late uh, 80s, early 90s. And um, so I stuck with that for my first tour with Leopard. And then it just kind of made sense. You know, Phil's got the Jacksons with the Wang. Sure. I just thought, you know, I'd get back to, to basics. And, and it was like coming home, you know, yeah. to Les Paul. It just is where I started. So and I now mean, you have a signature model, Les Paul. Yes, it's not this one. But, but, but it's kind of based roughly. Well, it's very similar. This is the signature one. It came out in 2018, I believe. God. Um, this one I'm going to talk about first. This is, okay, called, yeah. this is called Una, named after my younger daughter, because my uh, J200 here is named after Lily. My daughter, because she said to me when she was a kid, she said, that red guitar you play, she said, can I have that when you're dead? <laughs> like, and I thought, okay. <laughs> so I had to name it Lily after that. Um, and then Una, my younger daughter, was at rehearsal in LA last month, and she walked in and she went through all the names, and she said, there isn't a guitar called Una, which there was once, but I retired because it wasn't great. Yeah. So, I told her I was waiting for a really special guitar. Anyway, this guitar, um, thanks to Cesar and all the folks at Gibson, yeah. uh, this is a Silverburst, obviously. Uh, I'm playing this for the opening song of every show, trying to pimp it out, get a lot of airtime. Uh, we're going to auction this at the end of the tour through Gibson oh. Gibbs Foundation to go to the Little Kids Rock Charity. So, uh, oh, wonderful. you know, I'm, I'm a big advocate of music education in schools, and Little Kids Rock are leading the charge in this country on that. So, so we'll try and pimp this guitar out. We'll try and jack up the price as much as possible, please, uh, yeah. for a good cause. Uh, and then I'll have to name some other guitar Una. So, but I'm waiting for the right guitar. How will they buy it? So, so people watching right now, how will they get in on this you auction? You know, this is, I haven't a fucking clue. <laughs> so, hey, some growing up is going to sort that out for me, but it'll be after the tour, obviously. Okay. So it won't be before late September, October. It'll be through Gibson Gibbs Foundation. So I would imagine that all information would be available through that website, through okay. Gibson Gibbs. Okay, yeah. well, we'll get like a million views on this, and one of you lucky guitar nerds can buy this guitar. Yeah, and if they don't want it to be called Una, they can take the scratch plate off. And Save that. There Save go, the yeah. scratch bit. Yeah, that's fabulous. Okay, that's yeah. a very that's cool that. start. Now let's talk about that signature. Because that's yes. I've looked at these for a while. First, did you come up with that finish? Yes and no. I mean I told him I wanted like a something off like a charcoal palette. Um, I've never really liked super shiny guitars. Yeah. Even though I'm a Les Paul guy, my first guitar hero was Rory Gallagher. Yeah. You know, who played an oh. early 60s Strat that had like no, no finish. finish. Um, and it was the first album I had was Rory, the first and second and third concert I ever saw was Rory Gallagher. So, yeah. so he was the guy who really influenced me when I was a, a kid, basically like my early teens, just starting to play. Um, so I, I've never liked 
patina or a shiny guitars. I've always appreciated a patina, like a guitar that tells a story. Yeah. So I didn't want to start with anything that was too shiny. So I told him we're going to dull down the hardware. You know, everything here is this brushed uh, chrome look, the machine heads, even down to the jack plate. Now both humbuckers were. I took the cover off this. Well, I didn't. Scotty did. Thank you, Scotty. Thank you, Scotty. Um, <laughs> just because it was noticeably not sounding quite the same as the other guitars. Oh. It was lacking a little bit in gain, and I need that uniformity if I'm going to grab it and play it for a certain song. So um, that's the only reason the cover is off of this. Uh, the, the finish is called, quite by coincidence, Antrim basalt black and I was born and raised in County Antrim in Northern Ireland Wow! Uh, but we didn't realize that till after it was Philip Wharton at the custom shop the Gibson custom shop he called me up and uh, he said we, we found something that we think you're really really gonna like and then he said so where were you born again I said you know Northern Ireland County Antrim he said well it's called Antrim basalt black so uh, that was a nice coincidence yeah nice it's like the universe saying good decision exactly yeah so that worked out well um, I wanted the guitar to be as light as possible um, it, it's not the lightest Les Paul I have but it's within the bounds um, it's a DiMarzio well we've got Tone Pro Hardwares which I have on all my guitars it's a SH3 in the back a super distortion on the front um, the only reason I use the SH3 was years ago when I get like a standard Les Paul to play on tour, um, this before I was in ears and we were much louder on stage, I used to have a real issue controlling feedback. Sure. You know, obviously our stage volume was a lot louder. Um, and I noticed that Phil didn't have to constantly shut the volume the way I did. So one afternoon after sign check, we snuck over and stole a bunch of, there's a drawer. Phil's guy has a drawer at the bottom where he keeps all the used pickups. So we snuck over and we, stuffed them in her shirt so I stole pickups from Phil I never did actually tell him that but uh, well so if he watches this he he's may. not watches. No, he, he doesn't care about what I say um, anyway so that's the only reason I mean there's no real magic to it you know it's just like okay that's got a bit again it doesn't feed back as much it's a good pickup for what I'm doing on stage you know so yeah. that worked we put the, the super distortion in because it kind of was relatively matched in level when I you know, switching the toggle when yeah. doing a solo and stuff. And uh, jumbo frets, which I have on all the guitars. Like I said, Tone Pro hardware's I got. I put the speed knob on this because I am shutting it off a lot. I find it much easier to use in these top hats. Sure. Um, you know, so that's just a little quirky thing. Uh, other than that, it's a Les Paul. Yeah, and do you like that And in Ebony Figureboard because it's a custom? Do yes. You, do you, are you more comfortable on me? Because I usually see you with Rosewood, but yeah, that's why that was the one that thing kind of surprised me a little bit about it. Yeah, I do actually. I mean, ebony would always be my preference. I mean, if I played a rosewood fretboard before, is because that was available. Yeah, you know, and it's, it kind of came with the guitar. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, yeah well, so well, Phil, ebony's my choice. Yeah. Well, well, given you're a big deal, you can kind of ask for whatever you want. They'll pretty much give it to you. I don't so. like to make too much of a fuss, you know. <laughs> I'm like an easy guy. You go to a restaurant, I'll just take whatever's on, whatever the special is, you know. Well, congrats. That's a beautiful signature. That's thank you, great. thank you. And there's one more. Scott, what was this? Ricky. This is, uh, that's Gary. Where's Ricky? Ricky is named Ricky simply because it's a Rick Nielsen model. Oh. It's a replica of his 59. Okay. And feel it. It is so light. Wow. And that's, God, I that's just shocking. love this guitar. So. Yeah. Um, oh, beautiful. And of course, Rick Nielsen is a lovely, lovely chap. So I'm happy to name the guitar Ricky. <laughs> uh, the only thing, I mean, this, these are the standard pickups on this. So this guitar does sound a little cleaner, which is great. I can use it for certain songs where I need to roll the volume off. Yeah. It cleans up really well. Uh, so it's a great stage guitar in that regard. So the only uh, thing we changed out on this was the frets to put the jumbos on it. It had the skinnier frets, and I just have a hard time banding those. Yeah. You know? Your signature has those about the thickest you can get, right? Yeah. 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 They're, they're, it's, it's it's like railroad tracks. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, you're a bendy guy. I am a bendy guy. Again, Rory Gallagher. You know, I mean, that's where it came from. It's yeah. like this blues thing. You know. It's that Irish blues deal. Yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. That's great. There you go. Man. Yep. Yeah. Well, hey. Thrilled uh, to get to meet you again. Thanks Thank so you. much. Yeah, thanks for talking to me. Yeah, and congratulations, you guys are just conquering the world right here. Go talk to Phil. He's around over okay, there. We'll go, okay, we'll talk to Phil Don't now. tell him I stole the pickups, no, please. No, no. That's, that's, 
That's our secret. Okay, now I'm with Scott Appleton, who is Vivian's tech. Yeah. Scott, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, tell me about this. Uh, Les Paul Studio that Viv's been using for a while. We call it uh, Casper, you know, kind of the friendly ghost, <laughs> sure. I guess, if you will. So, uh, just the old uh, Super, or sorry, just Super 3 pickup in the back and all that stuff, so nothing too much out of the ordinary on these. So the DiMarzio... Super yeah. 3s, yeah, exactly. So he's been using those for quite a while, yeah. so... You know, just the trap inlays and all that stuff. Mm. Very you, simple guitar. You know, isn't it amazing that, I mean, arguably, you know, a, 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 a huge guitar player mm -hmm. could have anything and he's got a studio. You know what? Good guitar is a good guitar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter what it looks it's, like. If it plays well, if it sounds good, it's a good guitar. Yeah, it's, you know? I love that. Yeah. I love that it, that it's, and he's a, I mean, he's a lifelong Les Paul guy, a Absolutely. signature Les Paul guy. Yeah, yeah. And he's playing the studio. Yeah. I love that. It's a great little guitar, man. It sounds killer. I mean, we actually use this for like four songs in the show, so it's a good oh, one. Yeah. That's great. And what strings are you running? Uh, we're running 10 to 52s. Okay. So, yeah, so, uh, sorry, 10 to 50s, sorry. Yeah, 10 to 50s on her. Yeah. Yeah, 11 to 50s. Sorry, I've got the wrong artist in my brain right now. It's 11 to 50s. <laughs> so, but, and, but they're down a half step. Yes, down a half yeah. step, exactly. Okay. So yeah, nice and slinky, good feel to them. We're using uh, Dunlop strings on all the stuff, so okay. really good strings. So yeah, we got that one, and then we've got another Gibson Les Paul. Beautiful top on this one, actually. This yeah. one's kind of made to look a little bit like uh, the Gary Moore model. Totally. Green, the greeny version. Who you know? wasn't... That was his like kind of his inspiration, wasn't Gary Moore like yeah, his, his he's guy? Yeah, a huge Gary Moore fan. Yeah. So. and obviously this one's modeled after Green and all sorts of kind of the same wear patterns and everything too. So yeah, in the pickups. Yeah, the, really nice ones in there. So that's I don't know exactly so, what's in this. I don't remember. Is it out of phase? Is it wired out of phase like that? No, or? it's actually just the pickup is actually just reversed like that, like the Peter Green style. So. Oh right. Yeah, yeah. So it's not all wired the same. It's just they reversed the pickup in it. So yeah. and Vivian likes the speed knob on the main one for the. Uh, for the neck pickup, or sorry, for the bridge pickup on this one. Yeah, so. it seems like he lives there. He does. That's yeah. kind of his thing. Although he does use the neck pickup quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, especially if he wants to get just a little bit more, obviously a little darker tone, stuff like that. But yeah, uh, yeah but this one's got a gorgeous top on it. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. And it just plays and feels great, too. It's nicely, nicely worn in and very, very lightweight as well. Wow, that is light. Yeah, it's probably, I think it's probably close to seven and a half, eight pounds. No, so that's not great. bad at all. So, yeah. Yeah, we were just at Phil's guitars and I, I mean, I don't know how he picks them up. He's, he, he works out, he works yeah. out a little bit. Yeah, God, he's working out during the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then he's playing 13s on top of it. I know. Yeah. That dude is superhuman. Yeah. Oh, here we got uh, Kate, which is his gold top. So P90s, these are actually uh, some P100s in there. Really, so it's a little quieter. Any, yeah, exactly. Eliminate any noise issues. So we'll use this on a three or four songs during the show as well. So. But just a good old historic reissue, you know, uh, 54 reissue, and there you go. Great little guitar, man. Yeah. This one's a lot heavier, but it plays and sounds great. This one actually has got a little ease on some of the songs where you have a little bit less distortion, so like uh, Love Bites and stuff like that. So sure. A little bit more, a little more nuanced guitar. So. Yeah. Uh, now, when, when he's with Dio, I think he's wearing playing a gold top, I think. I believe it was. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look. I'm not yeah. sure. So this is some deep, some deep gear nerdery that you can get into in the comments section. No, no pun intended, but that's a deep dive sort of thing. So. <laughs> um, yeah. Last but certainly not least, a good old J200 that we've had for years. Uh, it's been through a few battles, as you can God. see, but it sounds great. It just sounds amazing, plugged in and everything. Is just, it my imagination or is that action really high? It is fairly high, believe it or not. Yeah, he does kind of like his action on the acoustic fairly high. It's yeah, not I'm, quite archery practice high, but it's getting there. <laughs> so, you know, they but, sound good up there if you can play them. You know, he's got he's got really good hand strength and everything. So, and yeah. obviously we're down a half step too, so that helps a little bit. Yeah. Then we're using the, the FU Tone titanium bridge pins in here as oh, well too, which cool. adds a nice little uh, extra sustain to everything as well. So. What uh, pickup are you using? Do you it's know? actually a Fishman system in here, oh. so yeah. Uh, I believe not the Aura. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, that one. So yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's been a great guitar. This thing's, this one's got the magic sound to it. It just seems to work really well. So. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it looks great. So that's pretty much about it for guitars. Uh, well then, um, let's talk. Yeah. Uh, let's talk the rest of the rig right yeah. over here. Yeah, no problem. We've actually got the uh, axe. Well, we're running uh, 
uh, Mastermind uh, GT from uh, RGM Electronics, which does all of our switching. I do have all, of all of Vivian switching for the whole rig throughout the show, so he just goes and plays guitar. Uh, I've got a little real-time control, a little nose pedal here, so I can actually do some real-time control on volume swells and delay really? swells and stuff like that. So Really? Yeah, it, it alternates between patches as to what it does, but it's kind of fun. So. Wow. It's just nothing more than a big you know, volume control, but it works great. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah, and we've got the uh, Shure Axiom digital wireless system. We've got the four-channel model, which has been brilliant. So when you, uh, not just to back up a bit, when you mm -hmm. were working this up with them, did you have to like really kind of work to get in sync with him, or was it just kind of an intuitive yeah, thing? Yeah, he's, he's, he's a very consistent player. So there's like some certain places where we'll do like a, he'll do like a watt swell or where yeah. he also wants the volume to swell along with it. Yeah. So I'll just go along with him and do stuff like that, or maybe just like a little delay yeah. swell or something like that. Well, in this band, they're a real, they're real parts. I mean, yeah, it's not like actual, a jammy. Exactly, thing. it's not where they're just going to go off in another weird direction. They're actually playing the real stuff every night. So yeah. they're very, like I said, very consistent players. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Just I was when you went on the next thing, I was still thinking about that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So from there, so tell there, the rest. Well, we go to the uh, Axiom digital wireless system. We've got the four-channel wireless system in there. Uh, out of those, it goes to the RGM IS84 uh, input switcher which I also control via the switches up here, so I can actually control all the input switching from on the, on the Mastermind GT. So, uh, Out of there, it goes into a Crybaby Wah rack mount unit, and we're using these uh, new flight time wireless Wah pedals this year, which have been absolutely great. Really? So, so yeah. that's on the deck with him? Yeah, it's on that's the deck with him. That's his whole pedal board. That's, well, yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> I've got a couple hardwired ones downstairs, and I've got this one upstairs on the deck, just because it makes wiring a whole lot easier, but it's, yeah. Uh, Chad Zamish, uh, Jeff, uh, Headfields Tech oh. from Metallica actually came out with this company. He uh, spent this time during COVID learning coding and uh, brought out these, this product, which has been great. So there's just a little receiver in the back of the rack and it's just completely wireless. Oh, you turn great. on a little switch on the inside in here, light comes on, wait a little while and you're off and on right there. That's about it. Battery so, powered? Battery powered. Uh, it's an internal rechargeable battery which lasts about 20 hours. Oh, God, that's so, great. So, I mean, yeah, I'll charge it maybe once every couple of days. You know, Boy. So super simple. And I yeah. bet all you guys at this level, you all know each other. So, if he came up with that, he probably just called you and said, yeah. hey, man. Yeah. And actually, when you get to Sav's rig, too, he actually has a little wireless uh, MIDI controller box, too. So, he'll actually send wireless MIDI without any sort of lag or anything as oh. well for Sav's pedals out there as well, too. So, oh, that's same neat. thing. But, that's yeah, great. it's cool. I mean, Chad did a great job on these. They're really cool really nice so. Oh. so anyway yeah we got those and then we go into uh, I've got a main axe FX3 and then a backup as well and uh, it goes uh, the one set of outputs goes to I've got two angle 412 cabinets underneath the stage out there underneath the set so the Marshall 100 uh, sorry 9200 uh, power and power those two out there the rest of it is all direct it all goes via AES digital output to front of house and monitors and uh, that's it super simple so the Marshall isn't the isn't in play it is. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, that... but it's only in play as for the uh, for the signal on stage. It's only in play for the cabinets on stage. Ah. So there's no mics on stage or anything like that. It's uh, all. Just he just done. wants to feel that thing. Underneath. Yeah, he likes to be able to use it and to be able to use it for feedback and stuff oh, too. Right. That's actually where the little nose puddle comes in handy because I can give him a little deuce on the volume to help his feedback and all that stuff as well. So it really yeah. works well there too. And it's also for Sab the bass player too because Sab doesn't use in ears. So he has to listen to everything on stage. So that's kind of helps for him. That's too, great. So. He's just like, nope, not using Not his them. bag. Not his bag. So, you know, and he's, he can do it. Yeah, okay. he can do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, well, that's but. too cool. So just out of curiosity, what sort of amps are you modeling in the Axe Effects? We're actually using the JMP1 preamp model in there. So that's used, used for everything. Did, uh, did, the, did you tweak it at all, or just like the factory setting was kind of there? Well, I mean, it was fairly close. Uh, Vivian had been previously using the JMP1 in his rig, so I mean, we kind of emulated the settings off the old one, and it yeah. turned out really good. There was a few few little tweaks and things we had to do in there just to kind of make it feel right on a few occasions, but other than that, it's really close. So, yeah. yeah. That, and then um, for the clean sound, we've been using a, uh, a jazz course emulation on that, so huh. for the really swingy type oh, stuff, yeah, you know, yeah. so yeah. But yeah, that, those are the only two models we use for the whole show. So. That's it's a real simple rig. It works fantastically well. The you know the aspect stuff is bulletproof. So, and uh, there we go. Yeah, we're using right. some of Justin York, York Audio's uh, cabinet emulations. Uh, he's got some great sound and stuff there too. Some of the full res stuff. Uh, but yeah, we've got 
three sets of outputs going out of that. We got one going in front of house and, and monitors. Uh, one is actually a dry output without any effects for, for a couple of the guys who don't like having all the washy reverbs and delays. So that goes over to Ted in the monitor world. And then I've got the other output goes to the cabinets on stage. Huh. So, yeah. Wow. Cool. Dialed in. Yeah, man. Well, Scott, thanks so much for joining no us, problem, man. man. My pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah.